Welcome to the Occupational Safety Leadership Podcast, episode number 94. In today's episode, we will continue our risk assessment journey, we'll call it. And in today's episode, we'll look at the 5x5 five five risk assessment matrix. Um, this is one that I use, but with that said, don't just, don't just use it because I say that it works for me. It has to be what works for you and your company. So we're going to talk about a lot of different ones in this journey Make sure that it works for you and your company and not just uh, the quick and easy answer of somebody else said it works. So with that said, let's just dive right in. So we've already done the three, three by three. We've done the four by four. So the five by five just adds a little more details. Um, And for me, because I always like to look at, uh, at, at it from a math perspective, of course, uh, how do I go back and look at my time, my money, my priorities, and, and how do I do, I do this? So I'm always lo- looking for the most bang for the buck that I can get out there. So that's why that this one works for me. Doesn't mean it works for you. So let's look at uh, just like the three by three and four, four by four, the five by five also goes by likelihood and probability and severity. Of course, the consequences are very low to very high. So it's um, I can't say that it's a simple math math problem because you have to get input from the uh, employees because something that I might view as a likelihood uh, that's pretty high that it could occur. Somebody in the field or the factory floor could say that's not a activity that we do. Does it mean that it, it can't happen? So maybe we call that a low or a very low. So uh, got to get input from the folks who really know the safety hazards out there. So likelihood, the probability, very low, low, moderate, high, and very high. So basically, it's a ranking from one to five. And like like a um, golf score, you want it to, to be as low as you possibly can. Let's look at severity, the consequences. So very low, low, moderate, high, and very high then. So um, consequences very low, minimal or no harm, and then when it gets up to very high, severe, catastrophic harm, and this is where I, I uh, pretty much said um, we don't want anybody killed. So uh, obviously people don't like to see that in writing, so we use different words at times, but it basically means the same thing. So, so if we look at um, the matrix uh, for those for those who are uh, listening and can't see this then so we have our typical five by five so we have uh 25 blocks and you just do 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 the uh math across then so a low is going to be anything that's shaded here in green so basically for those who can't see it's anything from a one to a eight a medium range is going to be anything from a nine to a 15 and the uh high range the high risk is 16 to 25 then so this is how I basically like to go back and say, how do I look at what I will and I won't address? Doesn't mean I won't address it. I stick it on a list because eventually as you're knocking off the higher things, things that were a, a, a lower risk are now going to be the things that you want to go back and focus on then. So when we look at uh, how that it ends up being with uh, uh, risk then, so let's look at, first of all, the very low risk. So you're going to have that minimal risk then or no harm at all. Low low risk means that there's a low chance of, of having it happen with minor. Moderate risk, of course, moderate, um, moderate likelihood along with moderate harm. High risk basically means that... Um, it's uh, likely to to occur with significant harm and a very high risk means that it's uh, highly likely it's going to happen. And of course, the result is severe or catastrophic harm or damage. So on this uh, slide here, we look at the five by five again, and let's just kind of look at how that we would go. And let's uh, cover a couple, of, uh, a couple of practical examples here. Um, and when we cover these practical examples, this is not, there's not going to be a right or a wrong answer. 
because many things uh, in the, the safety world, we have to look at the operation itself. We just can't literally look at two or three words and say anything that's in, in, in this use. You have to look at your existing controls in place along with things like training and how that you're tackling things. You just can't um, use a word and say that's bad. It never gets used because there, there, there are certain activities that we have to put the controls in place because we're trying to get the desired outcome and that's basically a very weasel weasel way of saying that we're doing everything we possibly can but we know that we have to do this activity so let's let's look at a couple of a few ones here so let's say that you're working out a chemistry lab and you're going to use sulfuric acid you know obviously sulfuric acid is very unforgiving if it gets on the human skin or eyeballs um but we're going to look at the total package. Uh, safety has a lot of uh, nuance to it. Is it in a lab hood? Is it a controlled environment? Do you have the ventilations, the PPE? Do you put the glass um, shield down as low as you possibly can to even limit the amount of uh, uh, spray or splatter that can? So, so there's a lot of different nuances out there. The next one, let's look at open beam laser usage. And it's going to be different, of course. If is it a visible beam, or is a or is it a beam that you can't see? You know. So again, a lot of different nuances uh, out there. So let's look at the uh, or think about the third one. I should say manually loading a tractor trailer with 50-pound boxes. So uh, think about a uh, scenario where there's a um, a wooden a wooden skid a person has is uh, manually loading the 50 pound boxes you know let's kind of think about the risk assessment that we have there and what can we put in in place um, to minimize that risk and minimize that consequence out there how about one that we do uh, a lot and don't think about it too often in uh, looking at the risk but uh, moving office furniture you know, a lot of us end up moving a, a desk or cube walls or something just because we don't have time to wait for the facilities people or uh, we work at a place that's small enough that we literally do that stuff ourselves, you know, as well. And the, the uh, last one, let's think about welding stainless steel. So when we weld stainless steel, we obviously know there's going to be fumes that are generated and all the rest. How do we protect the welder? And not just that, but... Um, where do we find these pieces? Sometimes it's a very nice controlled environment inside of a lab bench, and we can put up the, the curtains to help to protect uh, any, anybody else from uh, seeing any of um, the welding operation, and we don't have to worry about glasses and all that stuff for other people. But sometimes it's in a spot that you literally are on a ladder and you're stretching, and so there's a lot of of uh, nuance again to this one here. So we have to we have to look at the entirety of the operation, not just a couple of words. And that is it for today's episode. So episode 94, the five by five risk assessment matrix is complete. Uh, we're going to continue our journey, and we're going to look at a lot of different ways that we're going to uh, look at, at risk. Um, and again, with risk, there's not a right or a wrong way. It has to be what works for you and your company. Um, I always get input from the folks who have to do the operation. Uh, there's been a lot of times where just watching the operation, I didn't really understand everything. Because sometimes when you go to watch an operation, you literally see the one the one time they do it a different way in years and years and not the everyday thing so you have to get input from the folks so i am off my soapbox episode 94 is complete thank you for joining me today my name is dr david ayers and have a safe day